Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I have got a beauty haul for you today. If you have missed them, I have uploaded videos the last two Wednesdays. There have been little bonus videos on my channel if you want to go and check them out. This Wednesday, I will be uploading my September and October empties video. When I did my last empties video, I was showing you on my spreadsheet how much I'd used up but also what I brought in. And I didn't actually do a video showing you what I had brought in. That was mainly because it was generally replacements, samples, and a couple of Gucci beauty bits, which I did dedicated videos to. If this is your first time to my channel, you may not know I'm actually on a beauty no-buy this year. And I have been for quite a while now. I've been on a beauty no-buy in 2018, 19, 20, and this year, 2022. I did a low buy last year. Generally my channel is more about trying to use up what I've got, appreciate what I have and move through my collection rather than being about constantly bringing new things in. But at this time of year I've got a couple of things that I'm getting as Christmas gifts which I've just been given so that I can share with you. Especially with Black Friday coming up next Friday it might give you some ideas of things that you either might like to ask for or that you might like to gift somebody else and you may be able to get them at a slightly lower price point. I say next Friday but quite a lot of the offers have already started so if I can find discounts and things I will link them down below. As I quite often think goes without saying but then realise actually I maybe should be saying my attitude to shopping and consuming has changed so dramatically because of my no buys and I did a video when I lost my luggage back in July where I, it was kind of a moment that I took to pause and reflect on the difference of me now versus pre no buys and things in terms of my beauty rehab behaviours so if you missed that video I will link it up in the eye. I have realised I maybe haven't actually been feeding that back to you guys quite as often as I maybe should to just see how different my mindset is and I think because my mindset is different I just kind of think everything is different but it's, it's not always so I do just want to make sure that I preface this by saying do not let Black Friday become an excuse for you to buy things that you absolutely don't need, don't really want or can't afford. Sorry, my battery just cut out. Probably just as well it cut out because I don't want to be getting preachy because who am I to preach? Like I am somebody who used to have a really problematic shopping addiction so I can't stand here pretending to be a saint or anything like that but because of that I know how generally damaging that was um, and I'm still living with the results of that as you see on my spreadsheets. So I do just think especially when I'm doing like a whole video I never want to be coming on here and presenting it like look at all this stuff that I bought and maybe I especially in my last video was airing a bit too much on the like oh this is really different for me and I'm a bit shaken by it because bringing stuff in isn't really what I talk about on my channel. But I am I am in a much more comfortable place with bringing stuff in than I used to be. The majority of the stuff that's in this haul is either replacements or things I haven't actually paid for, for the most part. So it's either gifts that I am showing you to give you ideas for things you might like to ask for or to gift on yourself, um, which is where Black Friday can absolutely be really useful. And um, you know, if you use those to your advantage, particularly given we are hitting a recession and a cost of living crisis worldwide really as far as I can see. Obviously I see the UK headlines more than anybody else's and things are looking absolutely dire so you know coming up to Black Friday if you can use that to your advantage to save some money in the run up to Christmas absolutely do that. That's using discounts smartly just don't use them to justify buying things you don't actually really want or you don't need or you can't afford. That's really what I'm trying to say because that is what I would have done pre no buy and it's so easy to do, it's so easy to get swept up in the oh there's, there's money off and whatever, don't let that happen. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway this intro is going to be about 10 minutes long at this point so let's uh, just stop waffling and get into what I'm actually showing you in this video. <laughs> First and foremost, something that you will probably see now in the background of some of my videos because I am probably going to put it up there. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I was trying to point with my elbow there but I'm kind of just blending into the bureau, is my advent calendar. This is actually one of my Christmas gifts but obviously it is an advent calendar so I, I have been given it to have during advent but I am going to have it in the background of my videos, it's going to sit up there. I've not added any of the things 
from this onto my inventory yet. I'll probably just add them on in between Christmas and New Year and start next year's inventory with them added on. I'm going to put this down because it's actually quite heavy. Do you know, ironically, I now can't really remember much of what's in that advent calendar, but I remembered looking at it when it first came out and definitely decided I'd look through all the different advent calendars. The Space NK one was definitely the one I decided was the best. However, I decided it that long ago that I don't really remember what the contents are other than that the Augustus Bader eye cream is in there, which I am superbly excited about. As you guys know, I have under eye filler. I've actually got a playlist that I will link up in the eye about different under eye treatments that I try because of the shape of my eyes. I've got quite a sunken under eye. I've got a propensity to lines under my eyes. So it is an area that I concentrate on quite a lot. I've had the Augustus Badger moisturiser before, the Rich Cream. I didn't buy it, I got a sample. And it's super expensive, but honestly this tiny sample, which lasted me maybe like a week, I could tell in like two days into the five days or whatever that I got out of this sample, my skin just looked so good and then I stopped using it and it, it wasn't even anything I could like put my finger on but it just didn't look as good. At £215 for 50ml that is a super super spendy moisturiser. Definitely one I would like to have if somebody really wanted to get me a really generous gift or something. Absolutely would love to own it but probably will never actually commit to it. Certainly not in the near future but I am very very excited to try the eye cream which is in this calendar because my under eyes are an area of concern for me the eye cream is possibly something that I might be able to probably not as my consistent eye cream but maybe like you know once a year to use in the run up to my birthday or up to Christmas or whatever is something I would possibly maybe commit to if the results from the under eye cream are as good as the results that I saw when I had that sample of the rich cream it's something I'm open to spending my money on so I'm very very excited for that. I'm also very excited for the rest of it. I've kind of done that thing now where I decided I wanted it and then I've tried not to look at the contents again so that I can actually be surprised each day. I'm sure I will be reporting back. You will see a whole load of that stuff go into my 2023 inventory. Anyway, when I decided to get the advent calendar, there was actually money off it. I don't think advent calendars did as well this year and I think that's probably because of the, the state of the world and the recession and the cost of living crisis. These are such a luxury thing. I can't even remember what it was originally. It was over £200 and it was down to 170 something. So that was when I went ahead and said, yes, I want to commit to having this for Christmas. At the same time, there was an offer on that if you spent, I think it was £250 and maybe that's where I'm getting the 250 from, you got a free gift with purchase. So I knew I wanted that and I also wanted this next item, which Space NK have gift wrapped for me. So I left the, the tissue on so that you can see what you'd be getting if you ask for Space NK gift wrapping. I don't think the Space NK Black Friday offers have launched yet but I believe this set has money off it on Cult Beauty because Lauren is also thinking about getting this set and she sent me a link to it yesterday and I think Cult Beauty have got like 20 or 30 percent off of this. If you were interested in a really spendy purchase Sally Hughes has done a thing with Cult Beauty and she's got the Augustus Bader Rich Cream that I said I saw great results with in her 30 percent off 30 items for Black Friday edit. So if you are interested in trying it, I think that takes it down to £150. I have moisturiser so I can't justify buying it as a replacement. I clearly don't need a replacement at the moment. If I ever was going to buy it, I probably would spend £150 on it. I did think it was really, really good. I just probably wouldn't spend over £200. That's taking it to a whole other price bracket. That chat aside, this gift is £60 full price. Holy Christmas morning actually taking my tissue paper off. It is this Olaplex set. So you're getting the number zero, which is the pre-shampoo treatment, the four and five, which is the shampoo and conditioner, and the number three, which actually there's number three in that as well. That's another one that I do remember is coming up. So they're not full size, but they're 100 ml, so they're quite a generous size. I have had all of these products before, really, really like them. They are obviously spendy individually, and I have quite a lot of shampoo and conditioners, so I was never going to be buying these as replacement. But I had been considering buying the Zero and the Three again, and then when this set came out, I thought, I'm just going to ask for that for Christmas. I really enjoyed this shampoo and conditioner. I think it was last Christmas actually I got an Olaplex gift and I really, really enjoyed them. So the advent calendar added with this 
gave the majority of the spend that was required for the free gift and to make up the rest of it I got a deodorant not the most glamorous thing to be showing you it's from a brand called Necessaire it's the deodorant gel Hannah Louise Poston did a sponsored video with Necessaire she had talked about the deodorant in that she said she's quite a sweaty person and she found this very effective I'm quite a sweaty person so I decided to give this a go. I've only been using it for a couple of days. Usually use the Sure Maximum Protection deodorant. On first impressions the Sure one is more effective than this. This is just such a different type of deodorant and it's 1% for the planet and a lot more eco-friendly and whatever and I know people who use natural deodorants do say your body needs to kind of go through a phase where it adjusts to it so I'm going to push through keep using it just now it's certainly better I've had natural deodorants in the past like the Capari coconut one and stuff did nothing like absolutely nothing within half an hour I was like I, I need to put on proper deodorant this is dreadful they were so useless that I couldn't have pushed through anything with that but th this isn't useless but I do still feel by the end of the day I'm a bit like mm -mm. but it's not terrible it's just and it's very much the very end of the day and I'm saying that but last night I actually did go to the gym so maybe what I'm saying is it didn't stand up to a gym session but it possibly will stand up to day-to-day -day life so I'll keep using it and I'll possibly report back on it I don't usually put deodorants or anything in my empties I just buy a deodorant use it up buy another one it's not like a problematic product or anything like that for me I've never stockpiled deodorant even in my worst days given this is quite spendy because this is 18 pounds if I find it is really effective or just really doesn't work I will report back to you and the last thing which I am so excited about <laughs> one of these patchology illuminating masks I've talked about these before this is just my favorite sheet mask my skin looks illuminated and radiant after using it they're eight pounds ago so they're really expensive but I needed to make the minimum spend up or whatever for this gift. I was like, oh, I'll put one of them in because my gran was paying for it. This is one of my Christmas gifts that I'm very, very, very excited about. I love this sheet mask so much. It's so spendy for a one-use product to be £8, but it's just so good. Any special occasions, this is your one. So the gift with purchase, I've been a bit sneaky here, so I've pulled a few things out of it. But the majority of this stuff I'm giving straight back to my grand to put under the tree. So you won't see most of this until next year. However, I did go to the H Beauty Carnival and I got a gift bag. You will see a vlog of that coming up. I don't think I can quite do an everyday vlogmas this year like I did last year. I just get quite a lot on this year. But yeah, I am definitely going to put up some extra videos in the run up to Christmas. You will see a vlog of Lauren and I going through to Edinburgh to go to the H Beauty Carnival. But at the H Beauty Carnival I got a goodie bag so I've got some items in here from that and some items that I have pilfered from that Space NK gift with purchase. These have been added to my inventory because as you will see in Wednesday's video, which is my empties, if I want to hit my goal of using up 300 items by the end of this year, I'm gonna to need to get super strategic and prioritize the minis. Some minis that I thought I could finish, I pulled out of that gift and added to my inventory. That stuff is in here. It is minis, so I will kind of race through it. I have got three mini vitamin C's. First of all, a little mini of the Drunk Elephant C Firma. I've had the full size of this several times over. I had repurchased it. I did enjoy it, but I actually found once they changed it so that you mix it yourself, I didn't like it as much. And I also noticed when I was using it, it seemed to be sort of staining my skin orange. like. Then because when I stopped using it and switched to something else like my foundation colour changed. I also got this little mini of the CEO Glow which is a vitamin C and turmeric face oil by Sunday Riley. Again we'll use this up by the end of the year. And a Dr Dennis Gross 15% vitamin C firm and bright serum. So again another vitamin C that I can use by the end of the year so that's all worked out quite well. I got two mini hydrating serums. One is the Verso Hydration Serum with Niacinamide so I'll be able to use that by the end of the year no problem. Also the Institute Esthederm Intensive Hyaluronic Serum. Two hydrating serums that again I've added in will count for two of my 300 items by the end of the year. I determined I'm doing this 300 like I'm hitting this goal it's happening. The other serum that I took out of the gift with purchase is from Dr Barbara Sturm and it's the Better Bee Niacinamide Serums. This is only 3 mils. I will use it around my period, it will hopefully keep my skin calm. So if I do that in November and whatever's left of it to be used in December around my period, 
I'll finish three mils, no problem. I've got a little mini moisturiser, it's the Sizzly Black Rose Skin Infusion Cream. I actually forgot, I've had this before, as soon as I opened it and started using it, I was like, oh no, I remember you. This is fine, the Black Rose Mask from Sizzly, it's amazing, absolutely worth the splurge. Moisturiser's fine. It's nice if somebody bought me it, I'd use up the tub, but I don't think I'd spend my money on the full size of this, but the mask is worth every penny. The mask is a tube of magic. This little mini of the Pharmacy Green Clean Cleansing Balm. As you can see, I've started using this. I took it when I went to Manchester earlier this week. Nips my eyes a little bit, so wouldn't repurchase it. Actually had repurchased this, so this is on my inventory for being added in. Beloved Drunk Elephant Makeup Cleansing Butter. This does not sting my eyes at all. Absolutely love this. Takes everything off. This was in my lost luggage back in July and I really, really missed it. Was so glad to be reunited with it. Finished it recently, so it'll be the empty one, it'll be in the empties that you see on Wednesday. I was toying about with the idea of trying something else. But Lauren actually bought this. So this is from Makeup Revolution and it's the Sally Hughes collaboration and this is the Butter Clean Makeup Meltdown Cleansing Balm. So Lauren started using this and found it absolutely burned her eyes. So she passed it on to me rather than just having it go to waste and putting it in the bin. In absolute fairness to Sally Hughes and Revolution, it says in the back, in big bold letters, avoid contact with eyes. It's not eye safe, so no wonder it was burning her eyes. But as Lauren said, who's got time for a cleansing butter that you can't use over your eyes? I'm completely with it on that, 100%. So I have near enough finished this. I think Lauren only used it once or twice and was like, can't keep doing this. I have been using it either like when I did my lipstick declutter video and I was swatching in my arm, I've been using it for that. Or I have been using it on days when I've not been wearing heavy eye makeup and I've been able to take my eye makeup off with micellar water and use this for the sort of remnants of face makeup. I did try it on my eyes as well. I didn't get along with it near my eyes either so it's definitely not an eye safe product. Like Lauren would rather just have a cleansing balm that I can use all over. I don't want to be faffing about with an eye makeup remover and then a face makeup remover. I'm not here for that life. That did have to get added to my inventory but it will be out in my next empties, no problem at all. Being given that just as I was contemplating not simply repurchasing this and realising how stingy it was and just being like no, we're going back to this. This is, it's a boring product and it's quite annoying that it's quite a lot of money for a boring product but this cleanser takes everything off, doesn't sting. I love it, so I'm just going to stay loyal. Absolutely staying loyal to this cleanser. But one of the other ones I had been considering whilst I'd been looking around had actually been the Pharmacy Green Clean, which weirdly Sally, I feel like I keep talking about Sally Hughes in this video, um, but she really likes this. I think this is another one that's actually in her cult beauty edit for Black Friday. And I had been considering it. Then as I said, I just went back to Old Faithful that we knew was all right. And then we got many of this in that gift with purchase. So I pulled it out took it to Manchester and it stings my eyes. Not unbearably, not as much as the Revolution Butter Clean one, but does sting my eyes. Wouldn't want to be using it all the time. Very glad I did not end up with a full tub of it. So I'm keeping the remnants of it for when I go to Dublin in December and I will finish it up then or between then and whatever's left to use up at home. So it will be in my empties for my 300 items in 2022. Uh, but I'm very glad that I did not commit to a full size of this. One of the samples in the Harrods goodie bag, which you made up your own goodie bag there, so I chose this, the original soap brows. It looks like a little clear tin, but it, it's a tin of solid whatever it is that's not, I presume, not just actual soap, but essentially like a little solid bar of something, and you get a spoolie with it. But having looked this up, you're supposed to get the WBC Co Prep Mist. You spray the soap brows with Prep Mist and then you rub the applicator in it and then brush it through your brows. So if any of you have tried soap brows, would it work if I just activate it with like water or like a makeup setting spray or something? Do I have to get the mist? Let me know if you've tried soap brows before. I've got quite unruly brows, so I'm not massively convinced that this is going to work, but I have been interested in it for a little while. So when I saw it in the goodie bag, I was like, I'm going to take the option to try you. And I think you'll have already seen this chat. But I got two brow products from MAC. So I talked about these, I think in the wedding prep video, the Wales, the one where I got my hair cut and was like prepping for the wedding when I realised my brown eyebrows, once I got the fringe cut in, were just 
not right next to the fringe. So I will just whiz through these. I got the eyebrow styler from MAC and the brow gel from MAC both in the shade Penny. So that is what my brows look like with them in them. I have also now had my brows bleached properly in a salon and dyed ginger so I could now use the soap brows which are clear um, just to shape them but needed to get these to make my eyebrows match for the wedding. It was very because when the fringe first got cut in it was like above my eyebrows so you could really really see my eyebrows. It was not great um, but it's grown a bit now. It's kind of sitting a bit more where I sort of envisioned it. So now I've touched it and it splits and oh right I'm gonna need to go look in the mirror and fix my fringe and come back to you. I feel like in real life it doesn't look like it's splitting and then in the camera it totally does. I don't think the camera is very flattering to the fringe. Like I feel like it always looks better in the mirror and then I see it on camera and I'm like oh it looks really weird. Um, But it looks better in real life. So yeah. Anyway. Fringe chat aside, travel back to the Harrods Build Your Own Goodie Bag. I also decided to take the chance to try this, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Top Push Up Lashes Mascara. I've got quite an oily under eye. I seem to smudge mascara. I usually have to use a tubing mascara. I was very interested in this when it first launched, but the initial reviews said it was quite a smudgy mascara, so I never actually committed to it. But when I got the chance to put it in the goodie bag and could try it out for myself, I decided I was going to do that. So I do have that to add into my inventory. But the mascara I have got on today, which as you can see, has not smudged. My favourite mascara, guys, was in the Space NK gift would purchase. It is the Hourglass Caution Mascara. This doesn't budge on me. Absolutely love it. So the full size of this is the gold tube, which is what you see in the picture here. But obviously this is the gift with purchase size. Black packaging, but it is still the Hourglass Caution Mascara, which I had the full size of that. I discovered it just before I went to Dublin last December and I was like, this is amazing. So I was so, so pleased to get a mini of that in that gift with purchase. I feel like I am always being given free mascaras and free mascara minis. Just like as a consumer, I feel like you walk somewhere and people hand you a mascara. I couldn't tell you the last time I actually paid for a mascara, but if I ever was going to pay for a mascara, this is the one. I love it so, so much. So I was so thrilled that that was in the gift with purchase and I've been able to have it back in my life and I'm loving it and I will have it for going to Dublin again this Christmas. Talking about free mascaras, I've got another two mascara minis that have been added on to my inventory this month, both from Chanel and it's two minis of the same mascara. The packaging is different, they are both samples of the Noir Allure mascara. This one is a one gram sample, this one is a three gram sample. Don't know why I was given one at one point and one at the other point but Two samples of the Chanel mascara, so that needed to be added on to my inventory. I tend to like Chanel mascaras, but I do find they are quite smudgy, generally. Not tried the new one yet though, so I'm sure you'll see it in an empties at some point, and I'll be reporting back on it. In terms of what I actually bought from Chanel when I got the samples, first of all, I used my Boots Points and got myself this lipstick, which is the shade 212 Character. These are both from the Autumn line, but I think they're kind of still hanging around. Rouge Allure Luminous Intense Lip Colour. This very pleasing pop out one. So this is the shade 212. It's a beautiful rich brown. first one that I bought. I absolutely love it. I think it's super super beautiful. So I used my Boots Points to buy that but there was another one that I really wanted and usually I ask for a couple of Christmas releases makeup wise for Christmas but I feel like this year I am very underwhelmed by the offerings. So when I was kind of getting my list together I actually went back to that autumn collection and said if this one was still in stock this was the other one I wanted from that collection, so this is going to go under the Christmas tree. But I've got it to show you today, and again, I'll do a cutaway and a swatch. Same formula, so it's a Rouge Allure Luminous Intense Lip Colour. So there are the Rouge Allure Velvets, which are the mattes. These are more of a satin, pleasing click-up mechanism. And then this is a lighter brown, so I'll do swatches, you'll see them side by side. This one's a little bit lighter. Both 
both just very very wearable colours. I've worn character already and I'm very excited to get to wear Alter Ego. We'll probably wear this possibly on Christmas Day. There's only one other lipstick at the moment that I'm really thinking is going to be on my Christmas list which is a Guerlain one but this is the first one. Alter Ego from Chanel. Speaking of Guerlain, I have four sample perfumes that needed to be added onto my inventory. My sales advisor that I am in contact with from Guerlain down south where they get the Art et Le Matier collection sent me some of these. So the first sample I'll talk about is actually the Shalimar Flanca for this year. So Shalimar Tonka. So as you can see this needed to be added onto my inventory but it has been used up. I absolutely love this. I knew I would. I like Shalimar. I loved last year's Shalimar Melissa May, um, which was the vanilla one. So this year they pushed the Tonka ingredient for the Flanca and it is absolutely beautiful. I did ask for that for Christmas. So here it is. Another one that I'll have to give back and put under the tree. The Guerlain boxes are so beautiful. But I ordered this, or my gran ordered this, right before the Christmas packaging launched. So this is just the beautiful standard Guerlain packaging. Guerlain Christmas packaging this year is so beautiful. I will insert a cutaway of it. It's absolutely stunning. I absolutely love this because it's got like the super old fashioned, like if you look at the old, old bottles of Shalimar from when it first launched, this is what it looks like. You know, that's what the shape of the label is like. I don't know if you can see, but it's like a really deep ambery colour, the juice on this one. So beautiful. If you like Tonka, you'll like this. It's nutty, it's spicy, but sweet. It's so good. I love Shalimar anyway, but this is amazing. Did get that as a Christmas gift after Olivia had sent me the sample of this. And she also very kindly sent me some samples of new ouds. So the one that I have finished, Oud Nude, this is almost like a fruity oud. If you like from the Art at Le Matier collection, Santa Pau Rosa, but you're not massively keen on rose, I think you would really like this one. So there's something fruity and sweet about it but the oud just anchors it, gives it just a bit of something. If you're somebody who likes wintry perfumes, like sort of headache inducing perfumes that are hard to wear in warmer weather, this I think could be a great warm weather smell. It's fruity and sweet. I don't think I would wear this in winter because I feel like winter is such a glorious opportunity to just get all the super rich heady smells out but I could see me getting a full size bottle of this as a summer perfume. If you like those heady winter smells and you like oud this could be a good summer scent. It is a bit fruity, it is a bit sweet but not in a gourmand way like it's just good. I really really like it. So if you like Santa Paula Rosa but you don't like rose which is exactly where I am, oud nude from the new release could be the one. Really really enjoyed that. The other one that I love, completely different and very much a winter smell, absolutely delicious, is Oud Cole. That's one I was really interested in. Olivia really kindly sent a sample of all three. This is the one that I thought I was going to like and I do. I absolutely love it. It's smoky, it's dark, it's intense. It is a winter scent. It is the sort of thing that makes my heart race. It's really, really strong. So I'm usually somebody who kind of likes their perfume to walk into a room ahead of them. So I do usually tend to do quite a lot of sprays. And the first time I used this, because it is quite a generous sample, I did probably overspray it and I was a bit like, oh, I don't actually know if I like this. But when I ring myself in and I do two sprays, one to the top of my arm, which is something I learned from following Alice de Park. So she was saying you've got like hairs on the top of your arm and things that holds on to the fragrance more than the underside of your arm where you're also more likely to be washing etc. So I do one on the top, one on the inside and do that on both arms with this fragrance because it's so strong and that is just the perfect amount for really being able to smell yourself but without overpowering it with this one. I felt like when I sprayed too much of it I got a really sharp soapy note from it. My skin seems to really push a soapy note. I find the same with Penhaligon's Lord George, the big staghead one from the Portraits range. It just smells like straight up soap on me. Something about my skin chemistry just really pushes that note. So when I oversprayed in this one, it just turned super soapy. But when I pulled it back in, four sprays in total, beautiful smell. 
so beautiful. If you like a, a smoky, dark oud smell, this is your one. It's amazing. I just wanted to add on here, I think part of the reason that I love this so much, oud is very often mixed with rose and there is no rose in this, there is no floral note at all. If you're not into a floral smell but you like an oud, this is so worth checking out. It's absolutely beautiful but it's an oud with no rose notes at all. And then the third one in the collection, which I'm not as keen on, is oud cherry. As I said with oud and oud, although it's fruity, I don't usually like fruit. I don't really like this one. It starts quite leathery and I really like the leather. I like the leather. I like the oud. I don't like the cherry. You can see there's quite a bit left of this one. I will finish it because I need 300 empties by the end of the year. So this is going to be one of them, 100%. But I'll probably just take it into work and use it up that way. I didn't think I would like this one. Olivia just really kindly sent me samples of all four. But I wouldn't have picked to sample this one. And yeah, definitely wouldn't commit to this fragrance. But if you like a cherry fragrance obviously might be up your street. So let's do some hair stuff next. First of all, highly recommend this. It's this dry bar shower cap. I know this is such a boring thing to be like evangelical about, but first of all, it's really big. So I find with a traditional shower cap, like probably not as much now that my hair's quite short, but when my hair was long, if I tied it up, it was like I had so much hair that it would push the shower cap up and then it would like pop back. And I don't think I've got a massive head but this is a really big shower cap it really accommodates if I swirl my hair up and just pin it up with two of the dry bar uh, hairdressers clips which are also I don't know what witchcraft it is it's patented wait and I'll show you one of them so these they never snag your hair they never catch I don't know I've had clips that look identical that I got in Ricky's R.I.P. Ricky's that were not the dry bar ones and they would like catch my hair and snag and they looked exactly the same but they were not. The dry wear ones are great. I tend to fling my hair up with these and I can put this over and my whole head is still covered and my whole hairline is still covered so it's really big but also on the inside if you guys can see that it's like an actual towel on the inside. It actually really keeps my hair dry. I feel like sometimes when you get one that's plastic on the inside and the outside if water like leaks in it then just stays wet on the inside and your hair comes out with like a damp ring around it. This one, A, doesn't seem to leak anyway, but if it does, the towel absorbs it and stops it from going any further. But it's also just quite good if you don't really want to be drying your hair straight after the shower. I will just clip it up and shove this on it and wander about with it. And I feel like because it's a bit toweling, it sort of absorbs excess moisture as you're going around. I do have some of those turby towels, but I feel like sometimes to get them as tight as they need to be to keep them in place, you have to like really pull your hair into them. Whereas I feel like I can just shove my hair up and walk around with this on and it's not pulling at my hair in the same way. So I am weirdly evangelical about the dry bar shower cap and would recommend it to everyone to enhance your shower cap life experience, which I know you probably didn't realize you needed enhanced, but this is game changing. I promise you. I know it's a bizarre thing to be like, I'm so excited, but this shower cap is just so good. Moving on from my shower cap loving, another dry bar product, this is a replacement again, Hot Toddy, which is a heat protectant mist. So I have got other heat protectors that you use on wet hair. I'm quite often styling my hair on dry hair, especially now I find because my hair's short, it doesn't hold the same way. So I feel like weirdly shorter hair, it takes less time to wash and dry, but I feel like I'm spending much more time styling it and restyling it because it just doesn't hold in the same way as it used to when it was long and because this is a heat protectant mist for use on dry hair I have been going through this so I finished my last one and that will be not in Wednesday's empties because it wasn't quite finished then but I finished it literally yesterday so it will be in my November empties and this is the replacement so if you're somebody who dry styles and needs a heat protectant spray really recommend this one super lightweight i've got very fine hair it gets weighed down so easily styles fall very very easily um, and i don't really like the feeling of product in my hair either super super lightweight doesn't leave your hair feeling like heavy or sticky or weighed down but you know heat protectant so very important if you watch my video where i got my hair cut you will have seen already that I have purchased Hair Burst Hair Vitamins. Now, these were on a three for two. So in terms of what stock was left in Boots, 
I got one packet of these, which are the original healthy hair vitamins. These are quite big white tablets. They do feel like you're taking a proper pill, which doesn't particularly bother me as long as I get a drink to take them with or whatever. It's not pleasant, but it's fine, it is what it is. It's probably just a placebo effect in terms of how they're presented, but it feels the most like taking a vitamin. So if the stock had been available, I would have just got three of these, but it was not. So I got one packet of this. I have got about five days left. I counted them this morning after I took my two. So I've got 10 capsules left, which is five days. So I've been taking these, must have been now for 25 days. It says take them for three months before you'll see the full effect. I'll report back at the end of the three months. I can't really tell if the growth of my hair is any quicker than usual. You can see uh, the roots that have come in there. There's not enough in there yet to tell if that hair feels particularly different or stronger or any of that in, in my opinion yet. I've watched specifically like unsponsored reviews of these. People have said like within a month they've seen a massive difference and I don't know if I would to be honest commit to that but I don't think it's doing any harm to take them so I'm going to keep taking them so we're nearly at the end of the first month of this one. Because there was only one packet of them I got two packets of these which are the unicorn vegan hair vitamins and they're more like gummy sweets. They're chewable, they're easier to swallow, they've got a taste to them but they do just feel a bit more like a sweet. I actually in fact, I must have been taking technically more than 25 days because I left these in work one weekend and I took uh, two days of these. That's why these ones are open. In theory, they're doing the same job, so I don't think having these for two days will have overall interrupted the cycle that much. I mean, actually, see, to be fair, I'm saying that. When I first got this fringe in, it was like up here. It was too short. It was totally my fault. I said the wrong thing. It has grown a good bit, I suppose. I just, I don't know. I've not really measured my hair in so long that I don't really know if it's growing any faster than it would have done. And I'm not sure if you actually read this, if it really says it actually will make your hair grow faster. I think it's more that it'll make your hair stronger. If they make my hair stronger, I'm on board with that. That's partly why I asked for that Olaplex set is because obviously I had to get quite a lot chopped off of my hair and I do want to grow it back and I don't want it to end up having to be cut again between the pandemic and introducing my budget and stopping going to my hairdresser for regular trims. I just felt my hair had got into a bit of a state so I do want to make sure I am taking care of it again. So if it's helping my hair be stronger, I'm on board with that even if it's not going to technically make it grow any quicker. Hopefully it will grow back stronger and healthier with the help of these. We'll see in the end of the full three months. Sticking with the theme of like healthier, stronger hair, I bought some more of the Slip Pure Silk Skinny Scrunchies. So I got some of these in January this year. I got them in the January sale. So I'd switched over to these. I've tried not to be using normal bobbles that obviously make your hair break and whatever. The ones that I've had, they've kind of got a bit stretched out now and lost their grip. These still kink my hair. I've read reviews of people being like, oh my god, like there's no kinks in my hair when I tie it up with this. If I tie it up loosely enough that it doesn't kink, it doesn't stay tied. So these do still kink my hair, but they definitely don't cause the same amount of breakage or anything. Like I don't take the bobble out and have strands of hair attached to it the way that I did when I was using like a normal hair elastic. I do think they're helping to not cause as much breakage and damage in my hair. So I think they are worth it for me, particularly now that I really do want to put that emphasis on the health of my hair. I decided to replace the ones that have had their life with more of the same so I went for the slip ones. If I kind of thought about it, Lauren and I did a beauty pie order and um, so I've got that stuff to show you as well and beauty pie do these and I feel like I probably should have got the beauty pie ones if I'd been thinking about it but I wasn't thinking about it at the time so I got the slip ones again. I mentioned beauty pie so I'll do the beauty pie stuff next. First of all, sponges, mine were all well over a year old and you're supposed to replace them every three months. I decided this was the opportune moment to get a bag from Beauty Pie and get rid of some of the other ones. So far I've been using them and they're absolutely fine. My Bobbi Brown corrector, you'll see that in my empties on Wednesday. I decided to replace that with the Beauty Pie ones. This is the Beauty Pie Super Luminous Under Eye Genius Brightening Corrector. I've got quite dark under eye circles. I've also got an eye shape that contributes to making that worse so under eye corrector is quite an important thing for me. It's not something I use every single time I'm doing my makeup or anything like that but if I've got an event on 
you can bet I'm doing corrector then concealer. When I first added this into my inventory, the Beauty Pie one is four grams and the Bobbi Brown one I think is 1.4 grams or something. So this is considerably more grammage. But I definitely had one of those moments where I kind of had to relearn that not everything on paper is as it seems because the Bobbi Brown one lasted me for ages what is I have already hit pan in this. As I said, I'm not using it every single time I do my makeup or anything like that. And watching my project pan, you'll have seen how slowly I'm moving through this foundation. I'm using foundation way more than I'm using under eye corrector in terms of my makeup routine. So this has only been introduced in the last couple of weeks to my routine whilst I've been finishing off the Bobbi Brown one and I've already hit pan. This is very much a super emollient under eye corrector. I don't feel it's got quite as much coverage and pigment to it as the Bobbi Brown one. It's much thinner, but I need a lot more layers of it to actually correct my under eyes. So I feel like I'm using a lot more product with this one. Now, price wise, I think this is about the sort of 10 pounds mark. I can't remember what the Bobbi Brown one is, probably over double the price. So even if I am using more of this and going through it more often, if I was to be repurchasing this, I'd probably still be better off repurchasing this one. But it was just one of those moments where, like, the fact this is a 30ml foundation but it's taking forever because it's a super thin formula that spreads out so far, whereas, like, I could finish like a 30ml of my L'Oreal Infallible foundation that I really like, but it's a much thicker foundation. I could finish 30ml of that, no problem. Whereas, like, this is a year. It's not even half that bottle. It was one of those ones where I was like every mil is not equal and every gram is not equal. I got two of these so one of them is in my empties and this is the Beauty Pie Dr Glycolic Soft Feet Peel Socks. I have used in the past the ones from the brand OK. Usually it's the green apple one but I think there's a few variations now. I find them super super effective. Really really like them. I read the reviews on these and a few reviews said they'd used other products that were similar and had had great results but did not find these did anything. I'm always a bit wary looking at the reviews on these products because these take about up to 10 days to actually kick in and start peeling. I feel like you always go through that period where you're a bit, where you're a bit like, when are you going to start? And just as you're about to give up, it starts. So I do think sometimes people are a little quick to review these and think it's not doing anything when it's actually maybe just not started yet. It actually says in the back of these ones that the skin should begin to shed in three to seven days. I think this took like a good seven to 10 days for my skin to start to shred with the other packet that I used. Your feet may take three to seven days to peel completely, just using at least 10 days before any important occasions. I felt like my feet were peeling for a much longer time than three to seven days. Probably it was seven days, but it was just like, oh, you know, it's like if you've used these products before when your feet are peeling, it's not pleasant. But the after effects are very pleasant. This got 90% of my feet to like baby feet. My right foot, absolutely. But my left foot, I've got a really, we've talked about how sweaty I am and now I'm talking about my hard skin and my feet. Like this is just not a glamorous video. I've got a really, really like thick layer of hard skin on. It must be to do, I um, roll my feet out the way when I walk. Uh, I can't remember if it's that I over pronate or under pronate, but whichever way it is. I pronate in some direction and it must be to do with the shape that my foot makes when I step but I get a really really built up bit of hard skin on the like inside of my left heel. This did not lift that whereas the OK one does. So these I think were £6 each for Beauty Pie members. The OK ones are, I usually buy them on, I think ASOS stock them and all over bonus stock them and they're about £8.50, give or take. I feel like for an extra couple of pounds that one got everything off, this one didn't but it did get 90% other than this one bit and it definitely reduced it but it did not get it off completely. But I do have very bad feet so I still think these are pretty good. I would still recommend them. If I was a Beauty Pie member I would buy more of them. I'm not a Beauty Pie member and I'm probably not going to sign up based on any of these products that I've used so far, like none of them are so wonderful that I feel like I would spend money on a Beauty Pie membership. I feel like for me as well, if I signed up, I would feel I've paid to be in this, so I'm going to buy stuff. And I just don't think that's the best mindset for me to get into, but I have enjoyed everything I've tried so far. Not been blown away by any of it, but I've not been disappointed by any of it either. So yeah, I've got the second pair of these and probably going to use these in the next day or two so that Hopefully for Christmas events, my feet are freshly 
peeled and maybe it's not been that long since I used the first set so maybe because I've not let it build completely back up yet it'll get rid of that last remaining bit. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Once they are peeled I got the Beauty Pie Footopia Super Softening Foot and Heel Cream. I've actually finished all my foot creams which is very very exciting so this is really exciting actually. Not my empties on Wednesday but after you see my November empties this will actually to be fair these might be in my November empties but basically this will be everything I own in, on my inventory under foot products like that's it I've used all my foot creams all my scrubs everything and this is pretty much what I want to have in my inventory under foot stuff going forward is a peel at any time when I've got one or I'm about to use one and a foot cream so I feel like this is a moment feeling quite proud of myself right now. The last product I got from Beauty Pie is actually something that's going in with my Christmas presents because the rest of this stuff was all replacements that I took in theory from my replacements budget but I'll tell you guys like my as I said my mindset to shopping has completely changed I'm not worried about the way that I shop anymore not that I shop very much anyway I don't even I don't spend the same amount of time thinking about shopping and anything as I used to but I have still not got the hang of budgeting. I am dreadful. That has absolutely got to be, that will be what I'm talking to you most about next year I think is the budget because the I, I'm dreadful at the budget but in theory all that stuff came from my replacements budget but this was not a replacement. This is an extra thing that I really wanted to bring in well I had the chance to bring it in before Lauren's Beauty Pie membership went out. Super dose vitamin C so it's a brightening body lotion. I felt like this added something different to any other body lotion that I have currently got. Obviously most of the time body lotions are generally about moisturising but I've got a couple of body lotions that are confused with lavender or whatever that are about trying to relax you and stuff but I've never had a vitamin C body lotion so I thought for the winter months when, you know, I mean skin as pale as mine is a bit grey at the best of times but particularly when there is like no sunlight in Scotland I thought this might be worth a try. I'm also like not down to, to like one body lotion left but I've really been going through my body lotions in the last little while so I do think, not before Christmas but at some point next year I think my body lotions will be super under control as well which is very exciting. I am going to have to give this back to my grand but I'm very excited to see if it brings my winter limbs back to life in January. We're on to the home stretch and I really I hope this video has been wonderful for you guys because I started filming at half past 12, it's now 25 to 4. The amount of times this battery has just decided to flash and cut out testing my patience and also if you're a regular viewer you'll know my neighbour on that side was at it for ages I had a whole every day of the summer had a different project going on outside he's finished and somebody down that end has now started and I can't it's not even somebody that near like when I look out my window I can't see who it is um but somebody somebody down that way is now making a racket with banging and drilling. It's winter, I'm like go inside and hibernate. But anyway, so yeah, we've been filming for over, over three hours at this point. I hope it's been good because I'm a bit demented at this point, but we are on to the home stretch. Technically these next things actually came from my interiors budget, but they're candles and I feel like those of us who like perfume and beauty things probably like scented candles so I feel like they've got a place in this haul. So the first one from The Vampire's Wife. I've actually done a blog post about this so I won't talk about it for too long. It is the Bonfire Candle. The packaging is beautiful. You guys know I love the brand. This is £85 so it is quite a spendy candle but it is quite a big one. This is the other thing about this candle like this sticker I feel like I have to keep sticking it back down it just keeps popping off. This is what it looks like that's how much of it I have burnt. The candle itself so it's called bonfire really appealed to me. The notes in it are smoke, leather and herbs and you know it smells lovely like smelling it now holding it. It, is, it does smell beautiful I really like the scent. It doesn't have much throw it's a really really subtle smell when it's actually burning. I was a little bit underwhelmed. Some people will quite like that it's a subtle smell so you know you obviously you can't please everyone it's personal preference but if I'm burning a candle I want the smell to absolutely fill the room. 
I don't even feel that this is a particularly big room that I'm in. A little bit underwhelmed by this one. The second candle, so I'm wearing my Fairy Tale of New York Belle Freud jumper right now, which I love. And if you watched my recent fashion haul or collect haul, because it had a few beauty bits in it, but my everything I've bought this year haul, I was talking about how much I, I bought this jumper during my low buy year last year. Absolutely love it. I get so much weight out of it last year even though I bought it towards the end of the year and it is absolutely one of my favourite things that I own. Not least because I love the song so very much. It has always been one of my favourite songs ever since I was really young. So I then got the candle. In comparison to the Vampire's Wife one, this has much more of a throw, much more of a smell. The notes in this one are mimosa, tobacco flower and myrrh. But and unfortunately, there is a but. I will also say, actually, on the positives, I really like that this one comes with a little topper. It does smell so good. The smell is excellent. This candle is around the £50 mark, and as you can see, the wick is not in the centre. So I started burning it, and it started tunnelling. And it's tunnelling because the wick is way over here. You know, it's not in the middle, it's not burning evenly. And I know there are ways around that, but this is a 50 quid candle. I feel like having the wick centre is a basic, basic requirement of a luxury candle. It really irks me when you're paying that much for a candle, I feel like the quality control should be a bit higher. So, uh, two candles down and not uh, massively impressed by either so far, which is Disappointing when it's two brands that I really, really like and have clothing from and really admire. Like, I had high expectations and I feel quite let down by both. Anyway, I didn't pay for this third candle. This is the Joe Loves Log Fires candle. I've not started burning this one yet. This was actually in the Space NK gift with purchase. So I'm just, I'm just showing you an unlit candle here, but I mean, it just smells. We'll see how this throws when it burns. It smells really strong in, you know, in solid form there. So hopefully, hopefully this one's got good throw. I feel like there's another Joe Loves candle in that as well. So we shall see. I've generally always had a good experience with Joe Malone candles. I feel like last year in the Space NK gift with purchase, because I got that gift with purchase last year with some of my Christmas presents. And I think there was one in there, I won't say it was like, Christmas tree or something. I feel like that was fine when I was burning it. I don't remember much of it. I don't think it's a scent I would have chosen but I did like it and I feel like it I don't remember thinking it was a really weak candle and I feel like I would remember that. So I, I have high hopes for this one but I did have high hopes for the first two as well so we shall see. But it does smell that log fires one just smells exactly like a smoky log fire. I'm quite here for that so fingers crossed it smells and it throws as well as it smells in the jar. Just adding this in to say, now burning this candle, it gives amazing throw, by far the best of the, the three that I've burnt so far. The last candle that I've got to show you is from Belle Freud again, and this is the Loving Candle. It's 50 pounds this was, so let's hope the wick is central on this one. I've not opened it yet. This is Tuberose and Sandalwood. So again, I'm liking that you get a lid with this one. I've not bought any of the diptyque candles for this year, but I'm quite tempted by, I can't remember what it's called, the brownie coloured one, but mainly I really like that they've got gold lids. I'm very into the gold lid. So I don't know if you can see, but here is the wick. It's di it's more central than this one. I don't even think that's in the centre either. Can you guys see? Hmm. Smells lovely. Tuberose, I have to be in the mood for tuberose and I think the sandalwood's a nice way of balancing it so it doesn't come too floral because I'm not a massive fan on florals. But I do think this is quite a nice, nice one for when I'm in the mood for it. But yeah, that's not a very central wick either. So we'll see when I start to burn this one if it goes any better. The last round of stuff I got to show you is actually from my Liberty Beauty subscription box. If you guys don't know about the Liberty Beauty subscription box, it's £20 a month, but you get that full £20 towards your Liberty account that you can then spend 
on any beauty products. Beauty products also in this instance included candles because I actually used some of my credit with Liberty for the candles but I did actually then take the candles out of my interiors budget so that's how I kind of counted it. Because Liberty stopped quite a few of the skincare brands that I like, for me it made sense to sign up to the box because I'd be paying for those skincare replacements anyway. Essentially £20 a month, I then take it out of my budget for the full amount on the month when I repurchase either the skincare item or like if I bought the candle I take that out of my interior budget so I take the full amount out when I spend it as though I've spent it all within that month rather than counting £20 a month out of my budget so that's the way that I work it essentially like putting £20 into a savings account every month almost like a sinking fund in a way for your beauty replacements so it means when I do run out of like my Kiehl's serum or whatever if I buy it from Liberty although I'm taking it out of my budget on that month I don't actually feel like I'm taking a huge chunk out of my bank account on that month so I quite like it I'll be honest I'm quite the fan of the Liberty subscription but the finance side of it aside you also get the Liberty beauty box four times a year packaging on the boxes is beautiful because you get these Liberty prints on the inside but this is where quite a few of my additions have come from this year are the Liberty beauty boxes although it doesn't technically cost me anything to get the box it has been adding on to my inventory all year but in this box I got a sample of the Wilhelm Moon Carnival can eh, candle perfume get candles in the brain now this is a tuberose one as I said tuberose I have to kind of be in the mood for this one's all right. It's not amazing. I'm not going to commit to a full size of it, but I will use the sample up. A little sample size of the Melanin Gats moisturiser, which I've added to my inventory. Again, hoping to use that this year. LA Bruquet Hand Cream. Votary Daily Apple Toner. Quite excited to get to use that. The nice thing about the Liberty box is Liberty has some of those slightly different brands that you don't really get in sort of mainstream places. So it's quite nice to get to try some of those things. And they're just a little bit different to the samples you would maybe get from like Space NK or whatever. Shower gel, Noble Isle, we'll use that up, that's fine. And then the last thing that is on my inventory from this box is this from Suku and it is the Treatment Serum Primer. And again Suku is like a brand that you just don't really get to sample or try very often so I was quite excited to get a sample from that brand. The last item that's in here from this brand Hot Mess the Rockins, oh no the brand is Rockins Cosmetics so this is called Hot Mess Black Glitter Gel Eye Pen. I use that as the base of my eye look today. I think it's absolutely fine but I have got the By Terry Ombre Black Star in the Black Pearl shade that I would use in the exact same way and I got quite a lot of fall down with the glitter in this so I didn't add this on to my inventory and I'm actually just going to pass this on. I'm not going to bother keeping it so I'm not adding it into my inventory to then count it as a declutter. I'm just going to pass it on as if it was never mine in the first place. The light has gotten so much that I think everything is starting to take on a bit of a grey tinge so it's probably just as well that that is everything for this haul video. Thank you so much for watching especially if you've watched through to the end because I know this is going to be a long one. Black Friday can be a great opportunity to save some money so if you can shop smartly get some replacements or some things you've really wanted for yourself or some Christmas gifts take advantage of it but do not let it become a time for things to run out of control for you. I did last year a beauty gift guide for gifts under £50. I'm going to link that up in the eye. Obviously it was last year so some of the stuff won't be available this year if it was like you know limited edition eyeshadow palettes or whatever but I think a lot of the ideas will still be relevant this year and I just think it's good to keep things in check, keep them in perspective even if it seems a bit rich for me to say that when I've just filmed for like hours to film a whole video. It is so easy to get caught up in the hype and the spending and the idea that Christmas is all about stuff when it's not. As I say I don't mean to sound preachy, I know when I was a few years ago and I don't want to be back there. So that's that's where the advice is coming from. It's not from a place of preaching, it's from I know this is what happened to me and I know it wasn't good so I don't want it to happen to anybody else. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you on Wednesday for the flip side to this which is my empties so you'll see what we've added in what we've taken out and what we've got left to do to hit the 300 empties by the end of the year i am saying we i know it's me i know it's my goal but if i say we it, it makes me feel like we're doing it together and i'm not totally alone so i like to say we so that you guys are doing it with me hope you're all on board with that thank you for watching and i will see you on wednesday for my empties bye